Hi, and welcome to kindergarten. My name is Mrs. Malloy. I'm so excited to meet you on our kindergarten orientation night coming up on August 24th. Until then, I would like to give you some information so that you and your families know what to expect. Bear with me as I share the screen with you so that you can see what we're going to talk about. We are located in room 1117. My email is jmalloy at ccsd.cc. My phone number is listed there, 570-784-2850, extension 1117. Just a little bit about myself. I'm married to my husband, Sean, and we have two children. Piper is two, she'll be two on September 11th, and my son is six weeks old. His name is Pierce. He was born June 30th. Um, because I just had my son not too long ago, I will not be starting the school year on your very first day of kindergarten. Uh, you will have Mrs. Miss April Mills, and I will be returning September 24th. Uh, so it'll be just a short amount of time that I will not be with you and you will have Miss Mills. Um, she's been in kindergarten before and knows exactly what I like as a teacher and how to help the students. So I have no, um, no worries about the transition and me being away for that short amount of time. Uh, one of my favorite animals is a giraffe, so you will see a picture there of me with my daughter feeding a giraffe. Uh, my favorite food is an apple. My favorite sports team is the Steelers, and we have a dog, a golden doodle named Chloe. She's 11 years old. So as you can see, our daily schedule students will start arriving at 825 and school begins at 845 and it dismisses at 335. Um, arrival and dismissal time will be a little bit different this year uh, just because they're going to try to stagger how many kids come in. So um, the school begins at 845. However, they I'm not sure they might start letting kids in a little bit earlier than 825 and maybe a little bit later than 845. Um, that'll kind of be something that we'll have to see how it gets worked out. But I do know they wanted to try to stagger students coming in and leaving the building to help um, safety wise with our new um, guidelines. Uh, our specials rotations will go on a 12 consecutive day schedule. So for 12 school days, um, your child will have the same special. They'll start with music. And then after that, they'll rotate to gym. And in order for you to be able to keep track of where we are on which special they have and which special they don't, um, I will let you know when it's coming up of the next special that they have in order so that you can make sure they have their library book when it's library and sneakers for when it's gym. Drop-off information, um, again, as I said, would be from 825 to 845, and they have to be dropped off at the cafeteria door on the side of the elementary school. This is different than in years past um, where students have been dropped off at the fourth grade wing. Uh, they're asking kindergarten and first grade to go to the cafeteria to help, again, with spacing out students and social distance. And temperatures will be checked if your temperature, if your child's temperature is greater than 100.4, it, uh, you will have to take your child back home. Your child won't be allowed in the school. Pick up information. Um, this year it's gonna look very different in that they're only allowing 10 parents into the cafeteria at a time. So please be patient. I know 10 parents is not a lot, so it might take a while. And we ask that you have a valid ID with you and a mask each time that you come to pick up your child. Um, if your child is going to be a pickup every day or on certain days, Mondays, Fridays, um, please list that on, fill out that parent pickup form that you'll find in your child's folder and turn it into either the office or myself at the beginning of the school year. And on there, you also need to list the people that can pick up your child. So if you're gonna have a grandparent pick up your child someday and maybe you're gonna pick up your child, you need to have both those names listed. If your child normally rides the bus, but is going to be a pickup for that day, or if your child has an appointment, you need to write a note um, signed and dated um, with the time that they will be picked up or leaving and ha have your child hand it to me so I can send it into the office. 
or if you're picking up your child that day and didn't send a note in, you can call the office before two o'clock. Only students who are on the pickup list will be taken to cafeteria for dismissal. Okay. Bus riders will wear a tag on their backpacks, which tells which bus they ride. This will have my name on it, your child's name on it, and the bus number on it so that each child gets to the correct bus. Um, if they're riding the bus, they will need to wear the mask and their temperatures will be taken as they get off um, to come into the school. Again, it's one of those rules that we have where if the temperature is 100.4, your child will not be allowed in the school and you'll be notified um, to come get them. But if, if at all possible, it would really help if you check your child's temperature before they come to school. Um, that way we can kind of prevent uh, you needing to come pick them up. Okay, lunch and breakfast, in order to give your child food, in order to put money on your child's account, um, you can use My School Bucks on the website. Uh, you can find that under the food service tab and, and then add, or under the students or parents tab, excuse me, and then um, add the money into the account or you can send in a check or cash uh, with your child's name and student ID number on it. Um, there's going to be two options today. Uh, this year, it's a uh, regular hot lunch or you, you can pack for your child. I know in the past, if you've had a child in kindergarten before, we've had alternate sandwiches and peanut butter and jelly, and they're not doing that this year um, just because of the safety issues of COVID-19. Um, it's very important that you talk to your child about whether or not he or she should attend breakfast. Sometimes students will see other kids sitting down to have breakfast and they'll sit down to have breakfast as well, even if they have already eaten breakfast at home. And then parents are wondering why their child's account, um, the money on their child's account is draining so fast and there's not enough money in there when they just put money in. And it, they, it's not something that I am able to go and monitor as I'm with students in the classroom. So um, it's really important that your child knows whether he or she is allowed to get breakfast. Okay, for academics, we teach um, uh, reading, writing, math. Our math is an everyday math curriculum. We will also alternate science and social studies. And we have a foundations program, which is a phonics phonics based program. Uh, we do not have homework in kindergarten, but any skills that you practice at home will help enhance your child's progress. Uh, I do like to send home um, little Ziploc baggies with guided reading books in that are the schools. Um, we were told this year that we still will be able to use those, um, but there's just going to be like a waiting period of in between times of when teachers can get those books out of the book room and return them and that sort of thing so that everything is sanitized and safe. Um, so we'll, I'll give you more information about that as the year goes on. Um, we won't start that right away at the beginning of the year. Uh, students will learn to write their full name even if they have a nickname um, just because it's something that they do need to know and it's a skill that they learn in kindergarten and we like them to take that through uh, to the grades that they follow. Please provide your child with a backpack that's large enough to hold um, a folder and library books. Um, I also ask that you send in a change of clothes just in case for accidents. Um, sometimes we get so busy in our day, especially when students are at specials or recess, they get so excited that they forget to go to the bathroom before and they might have an accident. So you can keep a change of clothes in a Ziploc or a bag, plastic bag in their backpack and then I also ask that you um, make sure they have an extra mask in their backpack uh, just because if they forget the one that they took home, then they always have one there for the next day. This year, because of COVID-19, um, we are allowing 
students to bring in toys. They will solely be used during inside recess when it rains or snows and we can't go outside to recess. And um, we ask that you simply put them in a large Ziploc baggie. So if the toy can't fit in the large Ziploc baggie, then it shouldn't be coming to school. Um, I'm not going to limit your child to only having one toy. They can have a couple toys as long, again, as it fits in that large Ziploc baggie and they'll be playing with it at their desk. Um, if for some reason it should break or something happens to it, the school um, is not responsible. So just keep that in mind as your child's picking out things to put in there. This year we're gonna be using a program called Seesaw. Um, it's a great way to communicate um, through an app or it can be done on a website. If you don't have the app on your phone, you can just go to any computer and type in Seesaw um, and it will come up. You can link that way. But it's a way for students to submit work on it, do work on it, and you can see what they're doing at home. I like to do it when we're doing our center time and uh, then I can check to see if the students were um, successfully completing the task. Oftentimes I'll have them take a picture of an activity that they might have done. That way I can kind of look and see if they, for example, spelled the sight words correctly or if they did the wrong vowel. I know to work with them on that vowel sound. Um, so it's also things that you'll be able to see as well and it's just an easy way to communicate back and forth um, through that. That's something that I'll send home a letter for you to join, but I'm hoping when you come to orientation, that's something that I can just have you scan right there and set up right away so it's already ready to go. Unfortunately, we will not be allowed to have volunteers this year due to COVID-19. Um, it breaks my heart, but it's just the way it has to be. Snack. Um, this year we're asking each child to bring their own snack. Uh, we will have snack in the afternoon around 1.45. It's only about 15 minutes, so please make sure it's something that's small that's not going to take them more than 15 minutes to eat. And uh, we prefer it to be wrapped. Uh, so that's like if you, uh, your child brought in a small bag of pretzels or a banana or um, a bag of goldfish. Um, we, we don't want it just falling out in their backpack or getting wet. Um, so nothing cold because they won't be able to have it until the afternoon, like I said, at 1.45. Uh, so I, I do ask that if your child is bringing something um, in their lunchbox for snack, I would ask that the snack is separated from their lunchbox because oftentimes when they leave lunch, they throw everything into their lunchbox and then it's hard to get things back out. Um, and it just makes for a smoother transition if the snack is in a separate um, area of the backpack than their actual lunch. Um, we ask that you do not send in any drinks other than a water bottle and your child may have a water bottle on his or her desk. Um, I am going to ask that you bring in a sock and put a sock over the water bottle so that the sweat doesn't get all over their desk and ruin papers, that sort of thing. Usually um, during snack time, we celebrate birthdays and we allow you to bring in a special treat. Unfortunately, um, due to COVID-19, we're kind of putting that to the side and we're still just going to have everybody bring their own snack and we'll celebrate the birthday in another way. And I promise I'll make it special. Okay, SOAR is one of our school-wide positive behavior programs that we have within our school. Um, the S stands for safe. O stands for on task, A stands for act responsibly, and R stands for be respectful. A child may receive a sore mark for positive behavior, that's what we call it, a sore mark. Um, and then once they fill a card, there's 10 spaces on the card, they get to turn it in for special recognition. Um, for negative behavior, they might receive a minor discipline referral, which is just if I constantly am having to talk to your child about raising their hand because they just keep shouting out. Um, and an, I'm one that it happens frequently, frequently, you know, I have to keep saying something. Um, that would be something like a minor. And if your child gets three minors, it's equivalent to a major. And a major is a discipline referral. So that's something that the office handles. The office would, um, 
most likely call you if your child receives a major the office would notify you that your child received a major and they would owe some recess time um, things that your child can get a major for are um, if they're hitting kicking punching um, throwing things those sort of things so again the minors are are really smaller things within the classroom um, and it needs your child needs three of those to get to a major I personally will give your child the benefit of the doubt because they're learning school, they're learning my expectations, they're learning the rules. So I'm pretty lenient in the beginning um, in a sense that, you know, I'm under more understanding, not lenient in that they can just do whatever they want. Um, but as the year goes on, the expectation definitely becomes more and um, I may not give as many warnings or reminders um, before your child has to practice the skill again. That's my philosophy is if your child is struggling to raise their hand and just keep shouting out, I might say to your child, you owe two minutes at recess time and they know that they have to practice how to raise their hand, wait for me to call on them and then ask what they wanted to ask. And we do that for two minutes and it kind of helps them realize, oh yeah, this is the the skill or the expectation that Mrs. Molloy wants. Okay, so here's some important inform information. I did say that you could send in a water bottle with your child um, since the water fountains will be shut off. And this year we're told that every classroom will have a water dispenser so that your student can go and refill the water bottle and not even have to touch um, the dispenser supposed to be hands-off. Um, please make sure your child's name or initials are on the water bottle and usually Century 21 is really great about providing um, Blue Jay water bottles to everyone but if your child wants a specific one um, you can send that in as well. I will send the water bottles home with you uh, with your child each night so that you can wash it out, clean it, um, put fresh new water in if you want. Um, but that way we know whose water bottle is who and just in case someone forgets one it, it's labeled we're going to be going outside as much as possible um, because outside they're telling us that we're able to socially distance and take the mask off whereas inside even though the desks are socially distanced they still want a mask on um, please make sure that your child is dressed appropriately for the weather so if it's warm um, we're going to be going outside as long as it's not raining so they would probably need shorts and a t-shirt however if it's chilly in the morning send them with a light sweatshirt or coat that they can always take off and just hang on the hook um, the students will be given a lanyard to attach their mask to and we will give them a mask break as much as possible. Um, we do have safety drills, including fire drills and lockdown drills. So if your child comes home and talks about one of those, um, do, don't be alarmed. I'm not really sure how they're going to go this year with our new safety guidelines of COVID-19, but I do believe we still have to have them. So it's just something to be aware about. Uh, we will have our classroom library being used, but the, rooks, the books are gonna be rotated in and out. So your child, my thought is your child will be able to pick a book for the day that we can use for our lessons, but also that they can look through um, whenever we have some downtime. And then all the books go into a basket and the basket, that set of basket has to remain in its one space for 72 hours before it can be returned. So students will not be sharing the books and germs won't be easily passed. And students will have their own manipulatives at their desk trying to think if there's anything I forgot before we get here. So this is our communication ways that you can get a hold of me. Um, the Remind app, we'll, we'll try to do that when you come in to see me as well. Um, it's, you can get yourself set up now if you would like. It's listed there. It's an app on your phone or you can use the website. It's kind of like text messaging where I can easily send out a message saying, hey, our 12 days are up, we have gym tomorrow, please try to make sure your child has sneakers. 
um, and you can also message me back from the Remind app. Seesaw is also another way that we're going to communicate um, any important papers that the school sends home or information that the school wants sent out or maybe information that I want sent out, I will put through there as well. Um, Seesaw uh, reminds me a little bit of like Facebook where it has a feed and you can kind of scroll through it and you'll see only your child's work. Um, my phone number is listed there. You can leave a voicemail when you hit the extension. It'll give you the option to leave the voicemail. And my email is there as well. So email, remind apps, you saw those are the best ways to get a hold of me. I probably check my email first um, pro over the other two, but I still do check the remind app and seesaw frequently throughout the day. And you can be sure to like Central Columbia's Facebook page. Um, there is also a PTO Central Columbia Elementary School page that'll give you more information throughout the school year. And it's just a great resource to have. So the big day of when I get to meet your child and you. On Monday, August 24th from 5.30 to 7.30, we will be having our orientation. It'll be a time where you can come in and ask me any questions that you might have from watching this video. Meet me, um, I get to meet your child, or if there's anything that you need to let me know about allergy-wise, um, things that might bother your child, um, just anything that you would feel comfortable with me knowing, um, that would be the time. And we're gonna keep it to a 15 minute uh, time block so that we can get a lot of families in and out within that two hour time frame. We're only gonna have a certain amount of parents and kids in each classroom at a time. So soon, as soon as I get the, the schedule and um, list of names, I will be sending out your time slot. Okay, so watch for that. Can't wait to meet you.